course of the first two videos, we've shown you how to set up tests, set up your system parameters, as well as run tests and connect all your accessories to the Omnia 2. In this video, we're going to take it a step further and introduce you to the SC6540 scanning matrices and show you how they can be used in tandem with an Omnia to create a more automated complex test setup. The associated research SC6540 scanners are a series of high voltage and high current multiplexers that allow the user to configure a DUT for multipoint automated testing. First, we'll provide a brief introduction to the series, then we'll demonstrate how to interconnect the scanners with the Omnia unit, set up tests, and do this through the Omnia's display. Let's start with the front panel of the SC6540. The power indicator LED shows you whether or not the unit is on or off. The module type LEDs show you which type of modules are installed in the scanner. If the red LED is lit, you have high voltage or continuity channels. If the green LED is lit, you have high current or ground bond channels. As you can see on this instrument, I have two high voltage modules for a total of 16 channels. The channel LEDs indicate whether your channel is set high or low for the given test. And as you can see, there are two separate modules on each scanner. There's a module A, which is the first eight channels, and module B, which is channels 9 through 16, if those happen to be installed on the scanner. Next, we're going to cover the rear panel controls. As you can see, we have two separate scanners here. The reason for this is because we wanted to show the difference between a master module and a slave module. The major difference between the master module and the slave module is the fact that the master has its own input power, whereas the slave draws power through the scanner bus input. Additionally, the master has its own power switch and control bus so that it can be connected to a PC. We're going to start with the master module. First, as I just discussed, you have a power switch, control bus for PC connection, input, and voltage selection switch with 115 and 230 selections. There's also a grounding chassis, which should be connected to a good ground if you're racking this up in a system. Additionally, there's the scanner bus output. The scanner bus output will be connected to a slave scanner bus input. This allows the master to communicate with the slave and set various channels. The address switches are 8-pin dip switches that are used to address modules in an SC6540 slave or used to configure the address of a master should you use GPIB communication. The dip switch address will be the same as the GPIB address in binary. Next are the input terminals, current, return, and high voltage. These terminals will interconnect to the Omnia instrument or other associated research instrument to provide high current, high voltage, and a return path for all of your test types. Additionally, the current and return ports can be used in tandem with probe high and probe low on an Omnia 2 for line leakage testing. Finally, we have the channels themselves and the channel types. You'll notice that the master has all of the same channel type. These white style connectors are high voltage channels. They're rated from 0 to 5 kV AC and DC. Additionally, there are also ground bond channels. These are for high current applications. The ground bond channels run individual current from an individual channel back to the GCOM port, and they're rated for up to 40 amps. This modular design allows for a variety of configurations. In addition to the master and slave configuration, you can also have different configurations for high voltage or high current. In other words, you can have 16 high voltage channels, only 8 high voltage channels, 16 high current channels, only 8 high current channels, or 8 high voltage and 8 high current channels, depending on your application. Next, we're going to run through a demonstration connecting an 8257 Omnia 2 to a slave scanner. Then, we're going to go through the Omnia's menu to show you how to set up the scanners for each type of test. For the purposes of this demonstration, we will not run through scanner setup for line leakage testing. This will be outlined in video 4, Advanced Testing Applications. The first connection we're going to make is the scanner bus. Connect the scanner 1 port on the back of the Omnia 2 to the scanner bus input on the slave scanner. 
use the screws to tighten the connection. What this allows for is it allows the Omnia to communicate directly with the scanner to tell it which channels to set for each individual test. Next, we're going to interconnect the high voltage ports. To do this, you'll need a high voltage to high voltage connector. This is an HS8-12 connector. I'm going to take this from the high voltage port on the Omnia to the HV port on the scanner. This will allow high voltage to be injected into the scanner and then set to any individual channel. Next, we're going to need to connect the current to the current port on the scanner if we're running ground bond or continuity tests. Using the LIMO and sheathed Kelvin connection, we're going to input the current and the sense plus on the Omnia and use the hook lug to connect on the current terminal of the SC6540. What this is going to allow for is it's going to allow for injection of current into the current terminal on the SC6540 to either connect to the HV channels for continuity or the ground bond channels for a ground bond test. Finally, we need to interconnect the return points to allow us a return path for all of our tests. Just as with the current connector, I'm going to use this black limo connector to plug into the return and sense minus on the Omnia and then use the hook lug to connect to the return terminal on the SC6540. Now we have all three of our terminals connected to run the tests. Now what we need to do is connect the individual channels to our device under test. For example, I can use this standard high voltage lead connected to channel 1 and then connect this to the device under test. I can obviously do the same thing for the remaining channels. While Associated Research Inc. does not provide standard accessories for the ground bond channels, we do recommend you use at least a 10 gauge wire or something that can handle up to 40 amps of current. Now we're going to show you how to set up tests using the scanner. I'm going to hit the Setup Test Soft key and I'm actually going to do a new file. I'm going to scroll down to the next available file and hit New File. Using the alphanumeric keypad, I'm going to call this one Scanner. I'm going to hit the Enter key to confirm. Now as you can see, we have a blank test set up. First, I'm going to show you how to set up a ground bond scanner test. As you can see, we have all the parameters that we covered in the previous video. But additionally, we now have the scanner channel set up. Hitting the scanner soft key is going to bring up the scanner channel screen. As you can see, I can select channels 1 through 8 and either set them high or off. For the ground bond test, you can only set an individual channel at a time per test. It's going to output high current through the ground bond channel and return on the GCOM channel as we discussed before. Once I've selected my channel 1, we can clearly see that this channel was set and that the LED indicator is showing you that a ground channel is set for channel 1 for this test. Next, we're going to show you how to set up scanners for a high pot test. It doesn't matter if it's an AC or DC withstand, the scanner setup will be the same. Once again, we can see we have our scanner channel set up here. I'm going to hit the scanner soft key, and you'll notice for the AC high pot test, it's a bit different. For a high pot test, you can set a channel high, which is red, or low, which is green, and black is off or an open relay. Setting a channel high will automatically connect it to the high voltage port that we connected on the back. Setting it low, will automatically connect it to the return point. The advantage here is that I can set multiple channels. For example, if I wanted to test channels 1, 2, and 3 back to channels 4, 5, and 6, I simply use the arrow key to scroll over and set each channel. Once I'm done, I hit enter to confirm, and we can clearly see the scanner setup indicated here, as well as on the HV LEDs. The scanner setup for an insulation resistance test works the same as for a high pop test. You can see we have our channels here and hitting the scanner setup 
allows us to set them in the same fashion. Before we get into detailing how to set up scanner channels for a continuity test, it's important to note that for the continuity test channels, you can actually choose how you'd like to set them. Going into the system setup menu, hit the hardware soft key, and you're going to see a parameter called continuity scanner if you have a scanner attached to the unit. Currently, we have it set to ground channel, which means that for a continuity test, it's going to act the same as a ground bound test. In other words, setting one channel for each test. However, if you'd like to do point to point continuity and set multiple channels, just as with the high voltage and insulation resistance tests, you can change this to HV channel. You need to set this in the hardware menu before proceeding with your tests. Once this is set, I can go back to my test sequence, add my DC continuity test, and now you can see I set these scanner channels just like the high pot channels. This gives you the flexibility to set continuity either the same as ground bound channels or point to point. Once completed, I can hit enter to save my setup. Now we're going to perform the tests we just set up. Before we run the tests, note that when a certain step is highlighted, it shows you which scanner channel is set for that test. So for the high pot test, we had the first three set to high and four, five, six set to low. Same for the IR test, and then we had high, low, high, low for the continuity test. We're going to hit the test button, and you're going to see the LEDs on the scanner light up as each test is run. Hitting the results key will allow us to scroll through and look at our test results. Over the course of this video, we've shown you how to use an Omnia with one of the SC6540 scanners. Having this knowledge in mind, in the next video, we're going to go over an advanced testing application using the Omnia and the scanners.